Today we will start Lecture 9-2 on the RMS Value and Power Calculations. This content comes from Section 9.3 in the text. At the conclusion of today's lecture, students should be able to write the formulas for a root mean square, which we have done several weeks ago, be able to perform the calculations that involve instantaneous average reactive power and power factor, and the RMS value. Recall that the formula for the RMS value of a periodic function is given by x RMS is equal to the square root of 1 over t, the integral from t naught to t naught plus the period x of t squared dt. Also recall that an important characteristic of the RMS value for a sinusoidal function is that it's equal to the magnitude divided by the square root of 2. Now let's look at why the RMS value is important to complex power. If a sinusoidal voltage or current is applied to the terminals of a resistor, the average power delivered to the resistor is given by the formula P equals 1 over R times 1 over T, the integral from T naught to T naught plus T, Vm squared cosine T omega T plus phi dt. That part in the integral multiplied by the 1 over the period is the same as the RMS value VRMS squared over R, or that can also be written as IRMS squared times R and the units are watts. So what you should see here is that when you express your voltage or current as an RMS value, you have the same formulas that we use for the DC circuit for average power. So the RMS value is also referred to as the effective value of the sinusoidal voltage or current. And this term is based upon the fact that given an equivalent resistive load and an equivalent time period T, the RMS value of a sinusoidal source delivers the same energy to R as does a DC source of the same value over one time period T. So using the effective value relationships, we can now rewrite the average and reactive power as P is equal to VRMS, IRMS, the cosine of theta V minus theta I, and Q is equal to VRMS, IRMS, the sine of theta V minus theta I. So now let's try an example. First, let's review finding the RMS value for the following repeating waveform. So the first thing we should notice is that it has a period of pi. And we should also notice that we have a piecewise linear function, V of t, because it has a value of 4. Four between 0 and pi over 2, and 2 between pi over 2 and pi. So VRMS squared would be equal to 1 over pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, 16 dt, plus 1 over pi, the integral from pi over 2 to pi, 4 dt. So VRMS squared is equal to 10, and VRMS is equal to the square root of 10, or 3.16 volts. So the answer is letter D. All right, let's look at another example. Obtain the RMS value for the following waveform and determine the average power dissipated in a 10 ohm resistor. Since this is a current waveform, we're going to use the formula P equals IRMS squared times R in order to find the average power. But let's find the RMS value first. This waveform has a period of two seconds because it repeats every two. So IRMS squared would be equal to 1 over 2, the integral from 0 to 1. This equation is 10t squared. 10t squared squared would be 100t to the fourth dt. So IRMS squared is equal to 10, and IRMS is equal to the square root of 10, or 3.16 amps. And finally, the power is equal to 10 times a 10 ohm resistor would be 100 watts. Here's our final example for today's lecture. 
If the following current flows through a 12 ohm resistor, determine the average power dissipated in the resistor. The first thing we need to do is to identify a formula to describe this piecewise linear function. So we see that it has a period of 20. So T is equal to 20. And that there are several ways to describe this, including V of T is equal to 2T for this first equation. And that would be for T between 0 and 5 seconds. The equation of the second line is negative 2T plus 20, and that would be for T between 5 and 15 seconds. And then this third line has an equation of 2T minus 40, and that would be for T between 15 and 20 seconds and then the waveform would repeat. So there are several ways we could do this problem to find the RMS value. Recall that we have to integrate over the V of T squared and times one over the period. So if I use the period from zero to 20, I would have to integrate three different squared line functions. However, if I integrate from five to 25, I only have to integrate two lines which simplifies life a little bit, so that's what we're going to do. VRMS squared is equal to one over 20 times the quantity, the integral from five to 15, negative two T plus 20 squared DT, plus the integral from 15 to 25, the quantity two T minus 40 squared dt. So by solving this integral, we get 33.33, or VRMS is equal to 5.77 volts. So the power delivered to a 12 ohm resistor would be VRMS squared over R, which is 33.33 .33 divided by 12, which equals 2.78 watts. And this concludes today's lecture on the RMS value and using it to find the average power delivered to a resistor.